I went to Fat Nat's Eggs today. Have you heard of Fat Nat's Eggs? I never, ever wanted to eat a Fat Nat's Eggs. <laughs> you like saying it, though. Because of the name Fat Nat's Eggs. <laughs> yes. And there's like an emblem of a, a fat guy. And it makes it sound... <laughs> Nat? It makes it sound like the eggs come from Nat. <laughs> I don't want to eat Nat's Eggs. It sounds somehow sexual. I don't eat eggs. I hate them. I'm Jason. I'm Jules. And we, we do in filmographies. filmographies. Week two, Don McKellar. Yeah. Canadian icon. <laughs> Tender dork. You identify the with him The god. Keith Gordon's heir apparent. <laughs> yes. So he's talking about shitters. <laughs> Crapper, as he calls them. <laughs> yes. The Adjuster. Oh, my God. It's an Anna Magoyan movie. With uh, Elias Coteus. Yes. Or Coteus. I don't know how you say his name. No, I think Coteus is correct. Okay. He was uh, Casey Jones. And The Killing. <laughs> he was The Killing. And he was also in that uh, bullshit Brad Pitt short film. Yeah. The... No, what is that thing called? Enemy Mine? No. <laughs> 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 R.I.P. Louis Gossett Jr. The Scout? Contact. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It wasn't worth watching. I'll sit here all night, though, and never have come to... The conclusion yeah man this movie came out in 1991 do you know if this is, is this ogoyan's first feature film I, th- I honestly looked it up and i don't remember it but i'm gonna say i think it is the tagline for this movie is some people work in mysterious ways <laughs> <laughs> i mean i guess uh, that, that is a tagline that's it, uh, mm-hmm. pretty fucking stupid the budget canadian 1.5 million how okay I was going to say, how is this cheaper than Roadkill, but it's not. <laughs> it grossed just under $400,000. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Jeez. He did family viewing before this, and I think people say that's pretty good. Hmm. Speaking Parts was right before this, and then The Adjuster. But yeah. I think The Adjuster is the beginning of a sweet spot where he makes like yes. three movies, and everybody's like, after that, you suck. And he came up with this um, because his family home burned when he was a child. And uh, he said it was so odd and fascinating that they were effectively at the mercy of this guy, the adjuster, uh, who was otherwise a stranger to them. You know, and there's some uncomfortable parts in here when he's especially talking to that couple. The one dude's just fucking seething in the chair. Which couple? The the homosexual couple. Seething? Which yeah. one's seething? Long hair. The long hair. Uh, jean. Uh, leather jacket. You think he's seething or he's? Yeah, he's asking questions and he's. <laughs> in the arm of the chair. Is he really? I think so. He adjusts his crotch a little bit. Oh, interesting. Because I always thought he was pretty much always uh, watching and evaluating him. But... He was. I think he wasn't liking it. Because he goes, oh, the dog. How much you pay for that? Is it a purebred? Yeah. The guy's like, oh, that's my dick. All right. Well, did you say that's my dick? Dig. <laughs> oh, you're Brad Pitt. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh The football players in the high school confidential sequence is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, they were a real New York University football team, uh, and they didn't know what the hell was going on until they started shooting. I was expecting like a real pile-on uh, GB. <laughs> hey, Which I appreciate you not cursing in could this be podcast. What eventually happens, I guess. Good boy. It's That's such a very odd scenario, what they got going on there. Arsenio Kenjian. Arsenio Hall? Who, who plays Noah's wife, Elias' Who's- wife. Uh, she's like she's actually Adam Egoyan's real wife. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't notice that they said that the community where they were supposed to be living community. Sure. Right. It's called. They said it's called Robin Hood. Pleasantville. Yeah. And he's also using that bow and arrow. Uh huh. So, 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 so some sort of an allegory. Okay. <laughs> I don't fucking know. From- <laughs> well, yeah, he actually is robbing from the rich. Um, he's not robbing, but I guess. Okay. Uh, why don't you hit me with that synopsis? Well, I want to talk about Adam McGowan for a second. Are you? Have you seen? You've seen the Sweet Hereafter or Exotica as a Dom Keller fan? No, the only one I saw was with uh, the blonde young actress Chloe. Chloe with Amanda Seyfried and, and Julianne, Julianne Moore. Moore. Yeah. Did you like that? I seem to recall liking it, but I don't know, man. I think I watched the sexy scene online. It's quite sexy. It. I think I remember. Yeah. I've seen this, I've seen Exotica, I've seen The Sweet Hereafter, I've watched Felicia's Journey with Bob Hoskins, 
I tried to watch Where the Truth Lies because the idea of that movie sounded amazing, mm-hmm. but it was boring to watch. Mm. Where it's like basically Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin are like sexual deviants and I think kill a young lady, and then it's somebody investigating it later. And it sounded like it'd be just awesome. Weird. And I remember it not being. And people talk shit about Egoyan's later films. I don't know that they're necessarily bad, bad, though. Mm-hmm. I think I think they all sound mildly interesting. It's... I think people are upset that he's not keying into the stuff that he keyed into during his early run. Because he's really nailing like a specific type of tragedy in these early movies. I, I was looking at his filmography, and I was actually shocked by how I hadn't seen really any of it. Well, we'll hit quite but a few. But I know few. the name. He works with McKellar a lot, so we'll see quite a few. Yeah. The Adjuster. Insurance claim adjuster Noah Elias Coteus does what he can to help his clients get as much insurance money as possible while also doing everything in his power to make sure they are comfortable in their lodging and life until their claim is processed. When he is approached by film director and sexual weirdo Bubba, Maury Chikin, to rent out Noah's model home turned real home for a movie he is making with his weird sexual deviant wife Mimi, Gabrielle Rose, Noah puts his family in a motel where his personal and professional lives emerge. Noah's wife, Hera. <laughs> exactly. Arsini Kanjian. Did you already say her name? I tried, yeah. Meanwhile, what I came up with. works as some sort of a censorship group responsible for censoring explicit material for some indiscernible reason. Hera also secretly records the smut so she can show it to her sister, Seda, Rose Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian, so she can be proud of her, but it seems to have blossomed into an obsession for Sita. Shit gets weird, which is saying a lot considering this movie is weird incarnate out of the gate, but it's all in a day's work for the adjuster. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good synopsis you wrote there, buddy. Uh, I'm just going to say it right off the bat. Yeah? I really like this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good! <laughs> this, it it's, 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 it's just its own thing. I spent a good chunk of the beginning being confused yes. and felt like I kind of got on its wavelength. And I, I, yeah, I like this movie. There's so many raw images right off the bat where you're just like, fuck, is this amazing? There's so many layers. And I mean, the confidence in the directing is impressive. Nothing's wasted. It looks like a million fucking bucks. Too. <laughs> yeah. And this it's, movie looks amazing. It's pulsing. It's driving. Coming off that chunky black and white movie <laughs> yeah. and going right into this. This is a fucking, I mean, this is pretty damn close to like a masterpiece. I was going to say, it's a very low-key masterpiece. <laughs> yes. Like beautiful shots, good acting. It's fascinating. An incredibly Lynchian story that doesn't just get lost in itself. Yeah, it doesn't really go the nonsense route, even though it kind of seems like it might be doing that. Mm-hmm. It's not. It just drops you in and drip feeds you and slowly increases that dosage until you start to get a better picture of what's going on with each character. It is confusing for like a while, right? You Absolutely. Mentioned that her, yeah. Her, whatever the fuck she's got going on. The wife? So here's the weird thing. Okay, so the movie starts, and I'm pretty sure it's just Elias in his bedroom. His wife's having a, some sort of a nightmare. He doesn't want to wake her up. He's got a phone call. There's a fire. Yes. Now, the entire time, and I come to find out later on what's going on but you're hearing porno he's looking out the window he's occupied by something he's flashing his light and you're hearing fucking and you're like what i had to pause it i'm like is somebody in this house watching porno on full blast no and it's I you play it i'm like it was me secretly <laughs> but and i'm thinking okay i don't know what the fuck is going on here and this is very interesting mm-hmm. and so he goes to the fire and this house is just decimated. And there's a sexy woman, but she's totally aloof. And he first starts going into his spiel. You know, you're in shock. Um, and I want to make sure you're comfortable. It's going to be a long process. Is this where she picks up the ring or they come back to the fire? Later, okay. yeah. And he comes out and he goes, yeah, you know, it's an electrical fire and what have you. I think then we see him at the motel. Did she lose her husband in the fire? Or no, it's, it's just her? It's It's unclear. So we see him in the in the motel, and it's like a real. Where is this movie take place? I didn't even bother to look. I mean, I imagine it's Toronto. Yeah, it feels Californian. Hey, what are you doing here? What? Yeah, because because of the hotel. 
how it's got that open courtyard, which feels very year round and not seasonal. Oh, really? Because yeah. I, I felt like I assume it's a very Canadian vibe, but yeah. I almost felt like this hotel was like weirdly Russian. Like I felt like it was strange the color okay. scheme and stuff. It's very sixties. I think I'm also now that I think about it, the the sim, the similarity between this and the model home in Arrested Development. And the fact that they have to drive in just mud and dirt to get to the model home. Yeah. It kind of feels a little Californian. But uh, so he's just king shit of fuck Mount Motel, you know, and he's walking yeah. by. Oh, shit. Noah. Every, everybody loves him. Mr. Mandelbaum. He's God. Yeah. And he's just yeah. cracking him. And Go. he's he's nice. It's, he's weird. Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, he's he's there for them, mm-hmm. but then. He's very scripted. Yeah. Even though we come to find out that he's got a routine, even when we don't know what's going on, it's, it still feels very scripted. He's he's pumping out empathy, but you don't know it's dry what it's, what your angle is on it's that. It's not but, empathetic. Yeah. It's just fact of the matter, but using buzzwords. You're in shock, Julian. Yeah. I am. We've been through a lot. Uh, we need to be calm now. But then we run into this uh really sexy Aid. She'll be with us for a while? I think so. I'll let her sleep. Are these new? The prayer cards? No, we've always had them. Oh, yeah, yeah, She gets progressively sexier. Yeah. And and, and more dangerous She's, as the movie goes on. The face of the... I mean, I guess the guy that runs the The manager is, too, yeah. But, like, they're, they're the face of positivity and enthusiasm for Elias Goteas. Yeah. He single-handedly put their whatever through somewhere you're the only reason this place stays open during the off season so perhaps for the manager he's revitalized the business but i feel like this woman specifically sees what she thinks is kindness she feels slightly like a religious nut and she's seeing yeah some sort of a messiah type jesus shit in this guy and surprisingly, considering he boinks everybody, apparently. I'll fuck anything that moves. This is the he thing. He isn't boinking her. He is fucking, like, Everything. everybody. Yeah. <sighs> the old man, you think? I mean, okay, so the Certainly old... his wife. The old man gets weird. He does. We owe so much to you. You've been so caring. Listen, I deal with people, okay? And you're in shock. But it it does seem like there's a sexual thing there, and I I would not put it past. I could totally see fucking him because he is fucking his wife. Oh yeah, he who's is. pretty hot. Oh yeah, she's like laying on the bed, tits down, and clearly has just been rocked out. And she adores him as well. Everybody loves him. He's slinging that dick left and right, and it's weird because it doesn't ever seem like. He's sitting around lusting and corrupted by lust. It just seems like it's a thing he does. He doesn't seem to really, yeah, have any deep emotions. Yeah, there's there's no joy. He's just doing the things. Pleasant smiles that are not attached to anything. Yeah, and he's walking around. He's seeing everybody. And he, he runs into the old man. I did, I did think this seems like the, the best job in the world. Can you, wouldn't that be great? You're helping all these people. Yeah. The apartments and you get to fuck them all. And just doing whatever the fuck you want, man. Oh, man. But the old man, he's got like a bunch of lamps in his room. We come to find out it's because he had an antique shop or something that, that he lived down? above or in. Yeah. And the old man's just like, why is it taking so long? And he's like, this is complicated, Tim. You know, it always is when you live at your place of business, sorting out inventory for personal belongings. Who did you get all that weeks ago? I mean, I gave you the list. It's not me, Tim. I'm waiting just like you. And the sooner we have this settled, the happier we will be. Thanks a lot, Sonny. And he grabs his hand. Let me look at your cock. He starts kissing it. And Elias looks down on him like, yeah. But then he slowly peels his hand back. No, <laughs> Tim. Say goodbye to Lorraine for me. And uh, so then we this throughout the movie, though, we, we see, oh, there's a weird instance where he's firing arrows at the billboard. And he goes to collect the arrows and he looks at another billboard. Uh-huh. And there's a man standing there in a suit. Yeah. And he just shuffles and goes behind the sign yeah it's good we see him later though oh my god <laughs> i'm that... glad that happened uh, there's <laughs> lots of images in this movie where i'm like fuck yeah. amazing so when we I see we're, we're getting close to one pretty quick here when we see Hera at work i just feel like they're in like a film screening or like a test screening because they have the buttons yeah i think and it's just you're hearing like torture and fucking and you don't don't ever see it and she pulls out a fucking camcorder like a full-size fucking camcorder it's got a huge 
the viewfinder. viewfinder. <laughs> you guys, you guys, before they had the flip screens <laughs> or a screen at all, you yep. used to have to stick your eye up to a a tube that and find you would that see view. a tiny version of of things. And she's just bootlegging it. And I don't know. I thought I, I think like about twenty or thirty minutes into this movie, I looked up the Wikipedia to just kind of steady myself. I didn't get ahead of mm-hmm. where I was, mm-hmm. but I was like, "All right, can somebody please give me a breakdown of what I'm watching?" Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. And I I think is it pornography? I think it's just I think it's pornography, but I don't understand what ratings there would be for pornography because it's already pornography. Well, here's the thing: because well, later we see wherever they're working, there's just huge bins in the middle of the room. Filled with porno mag pages. So, and then you see a guy actually rip one out and he throws it in there. It's like, so has this magazine yet to hit the shelves? And it's your job to rip out pages and then they're going to mass produce it? I don't understand because pornography, it's already like, okay, don't have kids in it yeah. or you can't fuck animals. And Otherwise, that's what, do what you want. That's what, yeah. <laughs> and they're pushing F, G, Oh yeah, it's, it's an alphabet, and they they correspond to different things. It, it, it yeah, it's completely nonsensical, but incredibly interesting at the same time. Again, this movie is compelling, and it rocketed along. Yes, having already watched a movie and had two beers, you know, mm-hmm. and then going into a second movie a bit drunk, it, it, it yeah, fired along. I was not tortured. I was not falling asleep. I was no. really surprised when I got to the last 20 minutes. I was like, oh, shit, this movie's almost over. And for me, you know how I nitpick. So when I'm sitting here and I'm not going, oh, the sister just watches porno on full blast in the dining room and they have a kid. I, I'm not even thinking that shit. I'm thinking it now. The kid with zero personality. He does not yeah, who's not his co- son. Uh, and they don't ever really address any of that. But, I mean, they show you later, but. But it's so, you, you're just left wondering, not like they're doing that, but like what's going on and what's going to happen next. And there's so many weird elements going on. The sister, she doesn't speak English. She apparently just stays home with what I'm assuming is the wife's son. Yeah, totally. I was confused about her for quite a while. I thought she was the mom. Yes. Like she's got a little bit of gray hair. Yes. And I was like, that mom's pretty hot. Yes. And then she talks about her sister way later on being back home Mm -hmm. because her brother sends them pictures so i thought that her sister was in another country and that was her mom yes but it wasn't really till the very end which is true that that is her sister brother's in another country but it's not the mom unfortunately it's her fine ass sister yeah and the little boy is a weirdo and he's got a doll did you notice the doll that makes all these various different random animal noises it's like a teddy ruxpin or something and it oh yeah 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 that thing was amazing. It's partially burned. When they would just have that on display, I was like, again, Anna McGoyan is getting these beautiful shots with this creepy animatronic. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's, s- it's partially burned. Did I you? didn't notice that part, but I... I it comes into play at the very end. God, this movie is so... It looks so good. It's so striking. It's, it's just like, fuck me, man. How do you make a movie this good and you're just some turd burglar who hasn't established himself yet? I mean, he has. This is his third This is the feature first film. film you've ever seen, nope. let alone made. People like those other two remember I said that. <laughs> he did. It's really fucking good, though. And it's menacing. And it's getting increasingly uncomfortable with the sexuality between Bubba and Mimi. Okay. Because he's number one, the bum, right? I, yes. Number God one, I, I... Oh, my God, the train scene. I will get to that. I just, I, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to watching The Sweet Here After and Exotica with you. Okay. Um, yes, this is the first time you meet Bubba and his wife. Yeah. There is a <clears throat> sloppy bum on the train that's like falling over and knocking things over. He's in his seat. Because Noah's wife is riding the train. Yes. And she's watching this. Yeah, because he's just a sloppy, dirty bum. He's having a heart attack, maybe. He's coughing. And then a hot, psychotic, young, hot woman. Like businesswoman in a mm-hmm. power suit goes over to him and is sitting down right next, next to him, him yeah. and spreads her legs grabs and takes his hand. his hand and stuffs it up there and stares directly into Hera's face with and an insane grin on her face and the cackle <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh my god it's fucking crazy I broke it yeah. and pretty hot I'm fucking like I'm, do we have a boner on our hands here 
I was going to say, this is a boner. Oh, my God. It is so creepy and hot. And then you find out they're a couple and they're super rich. At first, it's not clear. No, not at all. Because they get out of the cab or the limo that the chauffeur drives. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, she's. I don't know who this woman is, but she's bringing this bum home. She looks like she is a lunatic that is into a thrill on the train and he's passed out. She's like a sexy Sandra Bernhardt. And so she's singing in the shower. You think that pussy was real wet too when she stuck that hand there? Greasy. God, they're they're getting a real thrill out of that. They are. Oh my god. These, he's just, these creeps involving everybody else in their fucking creep shit. And I don't even know what the fuck happens at the end. No, oh, god damn it. I was hoping to ask you about that, but go ahead. Because we'll, 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 we shouldn't talk about that. No, no, no. There. And there, and she mentions the vulna- why people s- sing in the shower and the weird element of cleaning yourself while you're showering. Uh-huh. So you're like, okay, I don't know what this is. Um, Do you sing in the shower? No. I, I, I just shower. I, I may have. I used to listen to music uh-huh. when I was showering, um, but now I, I don't shower at all, so... <laughs> <laughs> you don't you're, you're strictly bath i don't I, I i lied i don't even i don't i don't bathe oh. i don't clean myself yeah a real dirty butt i bet I, you wouldn't believe it <laughs> Chiseling. 20 pounds of caked in dread poop well at least it's not full of meat right right yeah. so, except for the meat that i put in there so elias he's shooting arrows both in and outside of the house. Are you into this? I would really like to shoot arrows out my window into the Kind of thinking, side. you know what? I might want to shoot some fucking arrows. That's pretty cool, dude. Can you imagine, like, I would just have, like, 500 arrows in my room mm-hmm. and then eventually, like, go collect them all. And I think the kid even says, are you Robin Hood? And the wife asks him. And he goes, no. He's fucking the old woman. He might be fucking the old man. Um, he definitely starts having sex with the woman. That the fire that started the movie. They do go back. She does find a jewelry thing that's been hidden, and her jewels are in there. And my God, her breasts. I don't remember them, but they're great. They're per- perfect. They're big, and they hang, and they're moving. I bet I was really enjoying it while I watched it. And she's blowing them. And it seems like he's enjoying it, but he's also sort of like not there. Detached, yeah. Yeah. It almost feels like a winding Refn movie. And did we we talked about he's he's in a model home a display home <laughs> yes and there was going to be a whole community there but it went bankrupt there are two other homes oh nobody lives there right and They're rotting I'm sure they sold they sold him this home for really cheap and then they stopped developing mm-hmm. and he's like oh they'll they'll come back though do you, would you really care no I, would I think be like, I would, don't come I back. think I would really like to just have this dirt cheap home out there because when you see bubba driving up in his suzuki, suzuki sidekick uh-huh. you do actually see that less than a mile away there's like some sort of a town i'm sure within 10 years it starts popping again so it's not like they're in the middle of nowhere right they're just a field away from burnsville or whatever when i i tried to look up this movie afterwards mm-hmm. after i watched it and Reddit is usually where, like, I type in the name and then plus Reddit. Mm-hmm. There's very little about this movie. It, I think there's very little about Adam McGoyan in general. Yeah, I feel like he started before the internet was really thriving, and by the time the internet was really popping, the movies that people were super into were already five years ago. So Bubba and Mimi, you know, eventually later on they go to a football field. And she's doing cheerleader stuff, and a football player gets on his knees, and she just he just starts gobbling her. She goodies. climbs up on him and sticks her pussy in his face. She puts one leg over his shoulder and then jams that thing in his mouth. Yeah, and I'm thinking the whole time, like, man, is this just going to be like a huge orgy? And Maury turns his back to it. Yeah, he's digging it, but he's also like, I don't know. He's also like, yes, I'd be into it. And then there, it's some sort of like a dinner. She gets up on the table and starts fondling herself. He's watching it. They're, so basically, they're so rich, they're beyond everything. Mm-hmm. They can hire football teams. They fill their party with rich people, and they yeah. still do their weird sex shit. Mm-hmm. It's very strange. It's incredibly strange. And somehow he stumbles upon Elias's house. I think um, they live there. Do they not live like up the street? I feel like their mansion is up the way. I don't know. He just drives up one day. Noah's fucking everybody. He he. I think he has sex with that dude. Which dude? The old man? No, the cup. The 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 man who shows him pictures of himself nude in bed. Okay. Well, we haven't talked about him yet, really. I, I'm saying, touching yeah. it on, in the beginning. 
So how does he come into their lives? They have a fire. They do. His, his husband or boyfriend is very traumatized by it. Whenever there's somebody experiencing fire, Elias just emerges from the darkness and puts his hand on their shoulder. Yeah. I'm the adjuster. That guy, he seemed uncomfortable with him touching him. He did. Because he, he, what? Yeah. And he looked back at his husband. Yeah. And they're showing him pictures, and he's trying to evaluate the things that he's seeing in the background. But clearly, you know, it's from their happiness together yeah. in their relationship. You're not sure if he's disturbed by it or if he's trying to ignore it. Coteus? Yeah. Like he's, I don't know. Because then he immediately he sees that the, that the dog is a precious member of their family. And immediately he goes, Is this a purebred? What'd you pay for it? Five hundred, six hundred dollars. I mean, I feel like he's. But yeah, I guess you touch on this in the synopses. Yeah, he's trying to inflate the numbers, like have them have the most expensive version of everything to get sure. the most money from the insurance. But you think he's getting some sort of a weird thing out of it? So specifically here, yes, because he goes because he's just gotten done appraising stuff, and he goes, "What kind of dog is that? Is that a purebred?" And he could see, the guy just starts fucking breaking up. And he just goes, how much did you buy that for? And that's when the guy in the background is just like, and I'm thinking he's just going to get up and punch him or something, but he doesn't. So it seems like he's, you know, I don't know. He, fucking, he gets a thrill out of making them put- River uh, dancing in their misery yeah, to some extent. Put put money points on everything. Yes. Let me- but he establishes how important it is that they have photos. Yeah. So later when he goes back and uh, the guy- the the boyfriend or the husband he goes I, I got more photos for you he goes oh word and he's just, it's just photo after photo of him and not full frontal nudity no you don't but see he is nude and it's very it's tasteful like laying and down suggestive. his butt it feels almost like a red shoe diary and uh, Elias you know you're not quite sure how he's he seems off put this. by it yeah but he's trying to be supportive and not a dick yeah because he's like you know there really isn't a lot of detail about any of the items in the background. But then he goes through like another picture or two. Mm-hmm. He keeps going. Yeah. And the guy's just like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the guy's handsome. He's got a raging heart on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is handsome. He reminds me of the guy from um, Dr. Sleep, who's also in, you know, I think he's um, a native actor. Oh, is this the guy from Fargo? Was this Zane? No, but he's in a, sh- maybe, but he's also in a show now that's like a. Dark Winds? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, was it Zane McLaren? Sorry, but. <laughs> Gotta put these handcuffs on you. Stand up, turn around. Mind if I talk shit while you do it? Uh, fine. Just don't make it too personal. All right. This guy's a child molester. Ah, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Fucking shit ass. Who's in the is season of Fargo? He's in Res Dogs. He's in Dark Winds. He's, he's awesome. in that, that Echo Marvel TV program. So he's uh, humping everybody. He invites the woman over because they're having. So Baba. Pulls up at their house and he's taking photos and he loves what he sees and he wants to rent the house from them to film a movie. But really, it's like he saw the child through the window, right? And that's what he was yeah. interested in. It's yeah, it, it's haunting and unnerving and psychotic. And I was really hoping it wouldn't go dark, and it and it didn't necessarily, at least in a graphic nature. Okay, it was very on the precipice of some funky shit. Uh, and so they're like, well, all right, fine. But the wife, at the same time, at her work, they hire Don McKellar. Yeah. He's the young guy, and he catches her filming. And he brings it to the attention of the boss, and he's not upset. In fact, okay. he's actually kind of turned on by it. Don McKellar, he's got he a looks goatee. like a penis because of the haircut. Yes. It's, yes. He's got a weird, like, shaggy bowl cut and a yeah. goatee. He looks terrible. He's yes. good. He's good. He is good. But he's cocky when he's interviewing him. He He's knows the ABCs. For all, yeah, all, all the letters for what it represents that you're flagging. Mm-hmm. And he knows. C. A scene where a person who is or is intended to represent a person under the age of 16 appears... One. Nude or partially nude in a sexually suggestive content or text. And the guy even says, I like how you hesitated before you answered. It suggested that you are aware of it, but you don't want to let on how much you know or whatever. So and, when, when he does Buster and he turns her into their boss. Mm-hmm. This is actually one of the funniest and most interesting moments in the movie. I mm-hmm. really like this because the boss is like... You see, when I was first appointed to this job, I used to think I was alone. Alone? In what? In feeling 
on occasion aroused by some of the material I was expected to classify. It's just to disturb me. Then when Tyler told me about what he saw you doing, I suddenly felt liberated. What you acknowledged was healthy. Of course it's exciting material. If our job is to make sure that no one else sees it, then we might as well preserve it for our own pleasure. And I really like his vibe when mm-hmm. he's doing this. And then she's like, no, I don't I don't jack off to this. Right. This is for my sister. It's only to explain yeah. what my job is because yeah. it's hard to grasp. And the look of like disappointment on that guy's face, it's it's subtle. But yes. it's really good. This right. is a really funny moment where this guy bared his soul to her. And for, yeah. He thought he found a sister, a brother, a a, a, a partner in this situation of horny weirdness. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, oh, no. And he's really good at actor. He's great. He's great in this role. Because, yeah, he's like, look, I get it. These things are too good to be locked away. Yeah. And I really like that you're leading the charge. I thought I was alone. And... You know, and she mentions her sister, and he goes, so sure, you, you watch it with your family, and mm-hmm. you share it with your husband or wife or whatever, and she's just like, no, nah, I just want her to see what I do, so she'll be proud of me. But he doesn't punish her, thankfully. But it's really dismissive. It's sad. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. He's just sort of, oh, I yeah. shouldn't have said any of that. Yeah. And Dama Keller's just there like a lackey. Mm-hmm. He's a real weirdo. He's like, he's he wants to fuck her. Mm-hmm. And he sits next to her, even though she's like, I don't like to sit next to people and yes. do my own thing. Yeah, eventually he just goes full bore on her, and she grabs his hand Oh yeah, and puts it in her crotch. Oh, my God. I, I mean, she this. buries it in there and just starts laughing at him. No, 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 no. Right? She does, he, does he come in his pants? What? No. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she puts it there, and he goes from aggressive and confident, right? Real dick swinging to like, Oh no, we're gonna get in trouble. He like looks behind him. Okay, and I think that shatters it, and then she starts laughing at him. Oh, okay, because she thought she got a big dick horny dude who's a fucking real man. Yeah, and then he's like, "No, I'm a little boy." Does right? She... Is that? I mean, yeah. That, that's what I, 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 I guess you're like... right. Yeah, I I must have missed that because it's very slight and quick when it happens. Does she give you vibes of the lady from Blue Velvet? Isabel Rossellini. Uh-huh. I never thought about it, but maybe a little bit. Yeah. I think she's gorgeous. Because throughout the film, when she says something to Elias and he says something back to her that is a little bit condescending, she goes, do I make you feel stupid? She fucking comes at him hard. And he, he's like, and she's shining a light in his face and he goes, what? She says, well, when I say something and you say something that dismisses it, uh, is it because you feel stupid? He's just like, what? He doesn't, he doesn't know what to say. She's, no. she's powerful. I yes. Like it. And there's another thing later that she says, I don't remember what it is now. But when she, when he invites the woman over at the restaurant, she's on to him. You're not sure how she knows. You find out. I mean, bro, that uh, when she comes over, it's so weird. Because she's like. That lady wants something to do with it. She's like, really? You're going to parade me over here and show me to your wife? It almost feels like that, but also, almost also like, you're married? I have to pee. You have a family? I thought you were just this lonely guy that I was banging away on. So, Bubba, yeah, he he he's like, look, I want to rent your house, and I need you guys to leave ASAP. And the wife's just like, I don't want to do this. This feels very bizarre. And Elias is like, well, think about it. We'll stay at the hotel, and hell, instead of getting two rooms, we can get one room. And then with the money he's given us, and the money that we're saving, I can finally buy those brand new fucking arrows. Bitch. And they agree to do it. And Bubba, he's real weird, man. And he's real alone. He's They're like, what's the movie about? And he's just like, my life is empty. <laughs> they agree to do the movie. The wife comes Mimi comes over with Bubba and she is like really weirded out by whatever's going on the wife Mimi she goes you sure you want to do this here and he's looking out the window at the sister and the son and he's just like yeah this is just so pure or something and she's just like I don't what but then they you know eventually go through it so they hot wire the house with lights and bring in all their bric-a-brac and They decide to hire the sister and the son to be in the movie. And I'm just thinking, my God, 
This is going to be a Serbian film. No. And we don't... The sister and the boy are just outside on the swings, while inside they have a cadre of like eight to ten-year-olds, boys. And they're like... I don't know if they're Boy Scouts necessarily, but I feel like they're wearing maybe uniforms or something. And they're playing strip poker. And all of a sudden, Mimi takes her shirt off. Yeah, she's, and she's rubbing her tits. And the yeah. boys are giggling. And this isn't like... A, they're not cutting to the kids. It's a, it's a group show. No, shot. yes. They are there. This is happening. And, and Bubba's looking out the window, and she's like, you want in on this? And then it goes to the family is in the hotel again. Elias has to go see the husband, um, long-haired picture guy. Mm-hmm. She's like, why? And he goes, I, I got to go. And why, After the dude's just sprawled out nude on the bed, similar to the photo, yep. over Elias's shoulder, we see the family getting into a cab and leaving. Mm-hmm. And he's completely, so he comes up to the room and they're gone. And then I think on his way out, he runs into the maid again. And she's just heaving cleavage. I mean, she's really psychotic, but she's also smoldering. And it's like, do you want to come to my room? Is there a room here? Right. Do we just go in and I just bend you over? I almost... When you say she's psychotic, I... I like you're like, do I just bend you? you, I almost feel like if he made a move on her, it could go really poorly. Like, she would be She would scream, maybe, and yeah, you're... Now you're Lenny on the run. But the level of sexual energy she's she's putting off is crazy. It almost feels like she wants you to marry her. Yeah. And then give her, like, nine kids. Yeah. A real preacher's wife. But you just could have sex nine times. Good Lord, do I... And I don't... She's in something else, I think, that I've seen. I don't know what it is, though. I write it down. And he, he gets into his car and he rushes to the house and he arrives. I can't believe we're already at the end of this thing. Yeah, I mean, what happens though? I mean Well oh you want to talk about the final scene? Okay, so he So he gets into the house. And there's a man in the mask dumping gasoline over everything. There's Maury, lights everywhere. Bubba. It's Bubba. Maury Chicken. The, yeah, pulls there's it like off. blankets or rugs. Now the look on Elias's face is sheer horror. So I had to rewind it. Because I was thinking, wait, were those rugs or blankets? Or were they like innards, intestine? It's, it's rugs or blankets. It's r- rugs or blankets. And the wife, you can hear her showering. The wife? Yeah, Mimi? Mimi, you can hear her showering and singing. And yeah, he's just pouring gasoline. He's got a weird mask on. And he takes off the mask and he goes, hey, what's up, man? Now, you've come in just at the moment that the character in the film the person who was supposed to live here decides that he's gonna stop playing house so are you in and he pulls out some matches and he's like you went in on this and elias is just like and he backs out and, and earlier in the movie the very beginning he's putting a light on his hand and the credits are playing over his lit hand that's uh, it's a it's real fibrous tenders What'd tendons you, and did you like almost start laughing at the opening credits? Scenes? Is it CG? No, I don't think it is. Okay. But it's like going from the first movie to this movie. I was just like, what? Like I, feel, I know what's going on, but at the same time, I'm like, those feel like really long fingers. Maybe they they're not seem, fingers. They did seem long. So he backs out. Bubba drops the match and apparently engulfs himself and his wife. In the house fire. And Coteus is out front watching the fire. Yeah. And get the flashback. All of a sudden, the wife, sister, and son are watching a fire. Mm -hmm. And Elias comes up with his fucking, I'm younger, emo hair. And the son is a baby at this point. Yes. And he touches her and he goes, Hi, I'm Noah. You're a jester. You're in shock right now. You're in shock right now. But I'm going to fuck you and your sister. Yeah. And then he looks at his hand, and it's doing that. And then it cuts to him in the present, looking at it, doing it back, forth, and then just the movie ends. And, oh, fuck. This goddamn movie, Jason. I guess what I wanted to ask you about this, uh, which is what I was stuck on last night, which, or two nights ago, and trying to figure out, was his family in that house, and they no, burned it up? they left him. Are you sure they didn't go back to the house? I guess I don't know, and it's inconclusive, but... He seems traumatized and upset at the end. Yeah. Almost to the point where his family might be in there. But what we're seeing, 
nothing suggests that he would have seen anything to suggest that. Yeah. I just assume they just left all outright because why would they go back to the house? I don't they know. They were getting weird vibes. She didn't want to do it anyways. Yeah. I guess I, I just thought that he always showed up to other people's trauma mm-hmm. when there was a fire. So it would make sense that it would end on his trauma sure. in the fire. No, I'm pretty sure um, they, if they are in there, I didn't, I didn't come to that conclusion. Um, I, I assume that they weren't. Yeah, it was never like explicitly obvious they were there. Mm-hmm. It was just like maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay, I find that so him and Maury, Bubba oh. and his wife are dead. They cooked each other earlier in the movie when the wife is drilling in on him again. They hear a scream. And Noah runs down to the viewing ooh, room, ooh. and uh, we see the guy that was by the sign, yeah. stroking his big fake slim Asian dong. This is a big fat dick. Yeah, <laughs> I was shocked. I started laughing. And he runs away. I was like, "That's awesome! I can't believe they had this guy stroking a visible dick." Yeah, that's fantastic. He runs away, and Coteus runs after him. Yep, and then he comes back, and he's out of breath, and he's about to say something, and he sees his wife cradling sort of the sister and stroking her uh-huh. and he's like blown away or something and just shirks away is he like this is not my family this so- is not my beautiful wife this is not my house let oh. them days go by let the water flowing back in the blue again water flowing underground did her husband die then is that Elias Bubba? swooped in? No, 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 no. Oh, again, I don't know, because it seems like maybe people are dying, but <laughs> it's not important. Because hmm. the woman whose house got electrical fire, she actually turned on something and the sparks occurred, and the fire started, and Elias goes, you didn't stop the fire? She just watched it. You just watched it burn? She goes, oh, I got, I got. Well, then she's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what the sickness? Uh-huh. She, she was... Like it's time for a new start. Yeah. As you watch the sparks move across the floor. Yep. Oh, this movie's fascinating. <laughs> Fuck me, man. It's good. It's so very, I, very see, good. My, Why is this not available to watch on things? I don't know. My worry was that your reaction was going to be that this is comically a comically difficult independent art film. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought that's possibly what I wrote. I mean, into. it's like Blue Velvet. Like I was saying before, not only does the lady remind me of the lady, sure, but the film, it's like tonally just mushed together and it's like so much darkness is suggested, Yeah, but they don't mire in it or use it for gratuitous sort of shock value. God, but like just the, the snap images of like her getting your pussy rubbed on the, mm-hmm. on the train and having oh, an insane face. Yes. In the color composition and just the wife is meeting cute meat flirting with a guy on the train and it turns out to be the guy that's oh, like burning her warts, warts off. Yeah. Or electric was not burning, probably using a Do you remember me? Oh it was liquid ice liquid nitrogen. Yeah, it was a cold one. Yeah. He's like, Of course I do. He's old. Yeah. He's like Do they 60. have sex? I would like them to because you know? her husband's cheating on her. Yeah. Oh, and not really banging her, right? We don't ever see them together. No, and I. But I mean, does he even like sex? Like, what is he doing? It almost seems like everybody's just painting by numbers. At this yeah, point. because he's collecting all of these people in this one location. Like Don McKellar might be the most alive person in this film. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. the The motel is making prayer cards that are like directly referential to him as like their messiah. The guy's like. Read this for me. Did you did you read it? No, read, read it, it now though. No, keep going. No, no, no. We love you. D- down there. You turn this hotel around. <laughs> yes. Karen. Can we let you can we give you a discount? No. My god, man, you stay here. You want to fuck my wife? You want to stay here for up to 1 week? <laughs> we got you covered. He does. Stay he does. A week. You can need to stay a week. Anything more than that, you you're really pushing your luck, but how do you feel about Elias Coteus in this movie? He's great. He's really good. God damn it. Everybody is great in this movie. Fuck, man. This movie. This is like No Man's Land. Just comes out of nowhere. Making a make face. And it's just a low-key triumph. The music, the, the cinematography, the the acting. Just, man, everything is so good in this movie. Okay. I'm like, how did I never hear this movie? 
You haven't heard of Exotica? You have heard of Exotica? Maybe. The Sweet Hereafter? I didn't look into any of that, but... These are the... the by the, name? Like, big movies that come... This shit doesn't really... These are know. Adam McGoyan's, like, no, the I movies that, that really pop. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Maybe Exotica, but I don't, maybe I'm thinking of Gattaca. I don't know. No, I'm also surprised I've never heard of this. For the level of bizarre, you think it would have pinged on our radar? Mm-hmm. Is, this, is this what you were looking for as a teenager? Weird shit? Yeah. Yeah. Confusing. Sexual. Just like, fuck. I don't even know. It's like I got a taste of indie film when I was like 13, and I chased that high forever, and it's weird I didn't come across this. Mm-hmm. This is a weird one. And I don't I've know. seen a lot of Elias's work, too. I Yeah. You do you love Coteus? I do. He's really good. He is. He's really interesting. Yeah. He's in, and he's in big movies, small movies. Yeah. <clears throat> and well, he just wants to act. He does, and he does it. Do you think he'd hang out with us? I don't know. What do you think he is like sixty now? Also, yeah, yeah. He might be creepy too. Like I feel Could like T Bird would be a bad hang. <laughs> yeah, that guy seems scary. Oh, I laced your toast with LSD, man. Like what? Are we gonna fuck or what? No, no, that's yeah. not. What we're hanging out with you. We just wanted to hang out, dude. Yeah, he's he just. What are you looking at? You think I'm short? <laughs> He is a little No, guy. man, I don't. What are you talking about? You think I'm fucking short? <laughs> no, man, you don't put out five two energy. Okay, let's. All right, let's do a rating on the movie. Okay, what what is your rating? Uh man, <laughs> nine. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I mean, I, I really, I was really blown away by this movie. I'm gonna give it an eight. Wild. I'm gonna give it a seven point five. Okay. Thank God we do the fractions because we initially were like, we're not doing that. I so I, I mean I'm gonna give this a seven point five. I was I was very enraptured. I was yeah. locked into it. I would almost watch it again. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't. I mean, it's like you can't watch it with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I kind of loved it, but I don't know that I loved it. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how. I, I kind of loved it. it, but I loved it. Okay. Yeah, I give a seven point five. You say eight. Yeah. What do you give? Coteus. I'm like I'm gonna go with the crazy eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah. For sure. He's so interesting in this. He is. It was really like as soon as Coteus comes on the screen and you realize he's the main character. Yes. Like, I would love to spend nineteen ninety one with Elias Coteus. His hair. He's got hair. Elias Coteus <laughs> usually does not have hair. It was exciting to see him with hair in this movie. Because he's hot he's just a couple years off of TMNT, right? That was 89? Man, I'm not a turtle guy. No, that was 90. I think TMNT was 90. So this is like the next year? This was 91. <sighs> okay, so we scored Coteus. We mm-hmm. scored the movie. Now our friend Don. Yeah. We give it old Donnie boy. I'm going to go with a seven. Yeah. Um, Just because there's not a lot. And even when he's in it, some of the scenes he's just a witness to it. But um, he's, he's really good. That goatee and the hair... Questionable. I mean, I think it fits the character exactly. perfectly. Yes. We, I don't think we really even talked about him that much. I don't think it was his look. I'd like to think it wasn't his look. Like his personal look yeah. at the time? Fuck no. <laughs> okay. This is like <laughs> they wanted him to be a smarmy little douchebag. Yeah. And so they gave him that shaggy hair and that horrible goatee. And like his vibes throughout are like manipulative, uh, trying to claw his way to whatever he wants. But he's a little shitbag, and it's not going to work out for him. Let me ask I, you this. Yes. You think he's handsome? In this movie? In general, but specifically, I guess, yes, in this movie. I feel like he was slightly handsome in Roadkill. Uh-huh. But then in this, I was like, oh, I don't know. What was I thinking? Because of the hair and the goatee. Yeah, he's, it's making him gross. Yeah. I Like a John Cusack type? You, you ready for this? I am. I don't know that he's handsome. I do think he's cute. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think, like, would... Canadian audiences be swooning for this guy? I don't know. I think maybe a tiny bit. Okay. I think it, the difference between handsome and cute, I don't know. I, th- I feel like if he, he smiles at you, like as, you, as your friend, you're like, yeah, bro. Yeah. You know? But if he's like really handsome, like, yeah. But, yeah, no, I, at the same time, you, you know, if you were describing him to someone, you'd be like, he's got a funny look at you know, my boy, Donnie. Yeah, he's yeah. a little weird looking. He's got a real likable charm. Huge dick. Yeah, but it's transparent. It's gross. Yeah. yeah, he was interesting in this one. Mm-hmm. Wildly different than the first role. It's nice to see that he can just be in a movie. Yeah. You know? 
it kind of feels like everybody's firing on like 11 in roadkill with okay. what screen time they have because they're young establishing themselves you know this one it's just a confident portrayal of whatever is going on with that that ship egg so that's uh the adjuster we didn't talk about how Morichi kin died on his 61st birthday from no i think i was recording maybe at that point but fuck what did he have embolism no heart and diverticulitis heart oh infection. heart valve infection like what happened did they put one in and they didn't clean it I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. Heart valve just gets infected all of a sudden? Oh, shit. Next week is Highway 61. Yeah. Oh, you knew it was the third one? I did, because I was doing the count. I was like, okay, this is technically five. Fuck. What is that going to be like? I don't know. I Honestly, a lot of these, not necessarily, maybe my initial reaction is thinking this is my cup of tea, so we'll see what happens. But I'm excited. Uh, the ones that I'm more familiar with are kind of down the road quite a bit but this is fun this is like 90s indie movies no it's fine so far canada style two for two man god you really had a hard time with hell hartley yes which is in the listener's future yeah i might continue to struggle but who knows maybe i will get into an accident on my way home tonight and suffer a brain trauma and and suddenly i get it you'll understand the unbelievable (laughs) truth yeah all right so we like don mckellar and you can follow us on Instagram, yep. Reddit, YouTube, Facebook. I feel like that sounded drunk. Instagram. <laughs> uh, That's we how do, you, you got to be drunk to talk about Instagram. <clears throat> yeah. We do them filmographies. Yeah. At gmail.com. Yep. Julian, I really want to text you a picture of my soft peener. Okay. What number should I send it to? 763. Six, well, you're going to end up getting it. But 763-634-1897. But then I'll forward it to you after I get it. Oh, word. Just like that voicemail. As mm-hmm. soon as I got it, I sent it right to you. Yeah, you did. And I was trying to read it, and I couldn't. Uh, you can also rate us on Papple and um, on, the, on the on the Apple podcast. Yep. If you leave us a exemplary rating, yep. you can suggest a film. If you leave us a one star, you can suggest the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can still suggest a movie, even if you give us a one star. We might hate you, though. I don't. The Hanky Panky review never showed up. He lied. That guy tricked us. He did. Good, because we didn't like this movie. I liked this movie. You did. Though. I said really nice things about it. He did, and I disparaged it, and except then, for the Hanky. What What else we got to say? Oh, Next now, week. No, now oh, Play we Network. That. Oh, that's right. We. I don't think we did it on the last episode. Mm. Jim's no. going to be mad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you can listen to us on the Now Playing Network.net. Yeah. Go to nowplayingnetwork.net. There's plenty of cool podcasts. You can check out Give things us, like... Name another one. Tracks of the Dab. <laughs> yep. Where you can listen to uh, audio commentary on horror movies. Mm-hmm. Horror or, movie. Just, there's one episode, horror movie. The Director's Club. The Fun House. With Jim Schwarzkirsky. We'll see you next week with... A Highway 61. Another dang Bruce McDonald. Yep. With Dom McKellar and that girl from the first one, Mm -hmm. whose name I should know, but I don't. Rita Pearson. The mother character in that movie was actually her mother. Is that her her father, too? Is that why they look so disappointed? Probably. I've been Jason. And I've been Jules. And we did Filmographies Part 7. Yeah. Yeah.